Auzubillahimineshaitwanirrajim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Assalamu alaikum, Ji ayanu, Pakhaira gale, Ni hao, Tuna shumpe, Washmale, Ohaya Gudzaimas, Guten Morgen, Ola, Bonjour, Privyat, Kaifa hal, Hale shuma chatore, Ahlan vasalan marhaba, Buna, Mucho, Gracia, Swabi, Ab, Balli gare aya, Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen, For tuning in to PTV World, And uh, you were watching World this morning, Along to the very fantastic, The very amazing, The very super, The very full of energy, the one who's actually had her coffee early in the morning as well. In fact, she gave me a cup of coffee today. Ladies and gentlemen, she is the very nice, the very amazing Ms. Shiza Hashmi and I happen to be Shazad Hassan Khan. It's a very fine Friday morning over here in Islamabad and I guess the weather's just perfect to go out there and have some pakoras and good wali chai. Really? How are you, well, it's, uh, no, I'm great. Thank you so much for asking. And uh, although I have had my two cups of coffee yeah, today, wow. I don't think it's working. <laughs> so maybe because I have the weekend spirit on already. Ready. Well, we are headed into a weekend and I hope it goes well for all of you. But for today, do rem uh, try to remember all of us in your prayers, please. Exactly. And uh, try to recite a lot of Piruchari if it exactly. goes a long way for sure. Wa wa and uh, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people might be thinking that, okay, uh, you know, we should go to Mandi, get the goats and whatnot. But please make sure that uh, whenever you're stepping outside your house, make sure you wear your mask, make sure you of wear course. your gloves as well, make sure you wear light colored clothes so that god forbid if you mm. go to the mandi and if you see any takes onto you as well you can shed them away there are these bugs these days quite a lot of them you know because that it's the monsoon re season over here yeah. uh, in Islamabad at least i don't know what about karachi but i heard that you know, it was raining country. in karachi as well it was raining in sakkar as well so for everybody who's out there please make sure that you protect yourself and follow all the SFPs. what about you what, what are your plans for today? For today, well, weekend spirit. Uh, weekend spirit. Yes, I am uh, going out of station, of wow. course. So I am really, really excited for that. But uh, coming back to where you said a lot of people are going to uh, get their animals and yeah. everything, you got your hand, hands on to yours quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it going? And did you develop that attachment to it? That well, of course you're supposed to. That is the entire spirit of sacrifice. You have yeah. to be close to the thing itself. I mean, you know, ever since I was a, a kid you know and uh, so my grandfather always used to bring in the goats like two days or one day before Eid as well so you know we would in fact I was uh, the kind of a kid where I will affiliate myself with the neighbor's goats as well you oh. know so whoever's going to bring them first. That's cute. And he, uncle aap hai, uh, ye, uncle uncle bhai, khana khila dhu, you know all of that. So I think that uh, I've always been an animal lover alhamdulillah may it be any animal you know mm -hmm. for that reason may it be a snake as well I think uh, everybody needs to have that soft side in their heart as well for all of those animals out there imagine and I, I think that it runs in our blood as well imagine wow. that you know as soon as it was summer even though that we my father does it throughout the year mm -hmm. but he would always make sure early in the morning he'll actually ask the guard to kind of keep like bajra for birds water for birds as well and you know so we have a dedicated place in our house where there will be always water for birds and food for birds as well and you know it's summertime, so you know you and never it's know. Ja it's it's a sadka as, well. as well, and you don't ever know. You know how many birds will be praying actually for you as well. You know, this is something which we believe in. Definitely, and not just for animals, Shazad. I think we have advocated this quite a lot of times. Every every time actually, whenever summer does start, that. Uh, it's a Pakistani culture, although we do hate it, but beggar culture, street children for that matter, it's a thing and they happen to be there even, even if we don't want them to. Yeah. Make sure to keep extra water bottles with you. Exactly. I do like to give them out because okay. whenever you do see them, they are always looking for something to drink, yeah. either tanda or even if not tanda for that matter. It's so hot, make sure to be of help to other people. Exactly, that's wonderful. And then there was this very amazing initiative taken by Capital Development Authority over here in Islamabad that on every street light, first of all, obviously, you will see a dustbin now, you know, on the yes, left and the right yes. side of every signal, you will see a dustbin. But not just that, just very recently, they have placed these boards where they are saying that, you know, we really need to discourage begging. And uh, I think that's a great initiative. A lot of people, in fact, all the Muslims, they're supposed to give away their zakat and sadqat as well. So please but make sure that you find the needy hmm. and give it to them as well and do not boast about it on your social media pages. I mean, that totally <laughs> is on, on you, whether you want to do it or not. But there are a lot of people doing a lot of good work and we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by such amazing good people over here in the studios today. You want to say something? Uh, this is what I was going to say actually, you know. Um, well, doing something good for people does make you feel good, yeah, of course. I feel great, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, charity, that is what, um, there, are, there is actually an entire philosophy of how charity or philanthropy might kind of be selfish for some people as well because it yeah. makes you feel good just in that way. But there are people who have dedicated their entire lives, Shazad, towards helping other people. I mean, think about it, how, how 
selfless can you be that you're actually adapting the role of giving, only giving and not expecting anything ret in return? And you know, all of those it, people who actually give are the richest people as well. You know, this sure. is something because you're trading with Allah Almighty. Then. Exactly. And, and uh, you know, I'm sorry that I've cut you short as well, but this is one thing which actually popped in my head and that is that this is something which I realized, you know, just around this year and that is that Money is just like one of those tools. Uh, for example, we have atta in our kitchen, yeah. just like we have sabzi in our kitchen, vegetables in our kitchen as well. So you really need to use it when when you need it. You know, you shouldn't be using it just anyways other than that as well. For example, if you're going to be hungry only, then you're going to eat. You know, so a lot of people uh, have not been able to kind of have that balance in their life where they kind of always think about your paise nahi hai, paise kam hai. You know, once you start to give to people, hmm. you will see how Allah is actually going to bless you and your bank Definitely. balance for that reason. And Definitely. this is something I firmly believe in, you know, because I've done that quite a lot of times. Because my father told me once and he was like that, you know, whenever you shorten some things, start trading with Allah Almighty, you know. Beautiful. And so just, you know, a few days ago, I was just thinking about, I was like, Allah, you know, this is one thing I need to do and, you know, please help me. And uh, so I was thinking, okay, you know, let let me trade with Allah Almighty. I was just thinking yeah. now, you know, so this is one element which I want everybody to remember that while I was thinking, mm -hmm. I got a phone call and my work was done, Alhamdulillah. Wow, so mashallah. even even though that I haven't done it, Abhi, you know, so this is how strong your belief needs to be. But imagine, say, yes. uh, you know, because from Allah Almighty, uh, we ask and we should ask from Allah Almighty only. That's one thing which really needs to be in our hearts as well as Muslims. But ladies and gentlemen, there are people who actually even at times are not expecting, but Allah is obviously giving them, but they do it out of uh, the kind of heart they have, the kind of soft nature they have, and they're always there to help people as well. And we're lucky that we've been joined by such people. First up, you know, I would actually uh, want to call him uh, the mother of all of those children who have been troubled as well. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the, this lady has been regular on the show as well. And we always want her to be here because she's an exemplary and inspirational woman. You will draw so many, uh, you know, you, you will draw so much of inspiration from her that, you know, at times I actually give her example to a lot of people that, hey, you know what, if you need to be a lady, you need to be a lady of such sort and such character as well. She actually happens to be a social activist. She happens to be the CEO of Bazicha Trust as well. She is Ms. Ira Mumtaz. Hello, assalamu alaikum, good morning. Wa alaikum assalam, Shazad. I'm, I'm, I'm truly humbled by your, this, oh. you know, it is really, um, and you deserve just, that. You I deserve that. In my humble capacity, whatever I can do, you know, one wants to understand what, uh, Allah wants from you mm. and this is nothing so I'm, I'm re really touched by your introduction and, and we definitely want such like exemplary women to oh. be over here on the show mm. and talk about it but not just that ladies and gentlemen we today I've been joined with somebody who happens to have been on the show for the very first time but we seriously wanted to know about what they've been doing they've been very active since 2010 you know after the floods and they have been helping a lot of people we really wanted to share their success story with you guys as well. And ladies and gentlemen, he happens to be Mr. Ramiz Mumtaz. And for all of those people, you know, who are out there, you know, I must say that, that you know, Allah actually picks you up for such a duty. For you sure. You know, you can for never sure. do that on your own. You can never decide on your own that, okay, you know what, I need to help people. That, that cannot true. be done just like that. Allah picks you for this role. And then obviously, you know, uh, if Allah picks you, you know, uh, there's no other question to it as well. So ladies and gentlemen, he happens to be the CEO of Green Volunteers. He's a social activist himself and he is Mr. Ramiz Mumtaz. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, good morning. Assalamu Alaikum and good morning to everyone tuning in and watching the show. Uh, perfectly summed up, you said it rightly that Allah provides these opportunities. So thankful to be here and thankful to be in this position. Alhamdulillah, and we it's really wonderful to have you. But before we actually start a conversation with Mr. Ram, you know, I would actually want you to tell hmm. us uh, a little about Green Volunteers and then we'll move on to Bazir Sure, sure. Green Volunteers was uh, formed on the onset of 2010 floods by me and a few friends, like-minded friends, who wanted to have a platform for the youth to engage and do some social work. Okay. But the actual the essence of the concept goes back to 2005. Uh, 2005, Pakistan was hit with yes. an earthquake. Islamabad yeah. suffered its first ever calamity with oh, the building collapsing. Yeah. I remember I was a young boy back then. Me and too. We <laughs> yeah. Likewise, uh, so we basically just went out, it was Ramzan if you all yes. recall, yeah. went out after school and just started collecting money from everyone outside, uh, ringing bells, going in the market, collecting for a cause. Uh, by the time we did collect a decent sum, which we actually thought was a decent sum back then, mm. but we, honestly we didn't know what to do with it. So that is when the concept came in that there are no youth based on, back then times were different, exactly. social media wasn't there, a lot of other pl platforms uh, including Facebook Orchid. wasn't there. Again, so yeah, or yeah. Orchid wasn't meant for that. Yeah. So, 
uh, considering all of that, we realized that there's a youth platform. So once we got in that position, slightly older, slightly wiser, so we decided to make a platform where anyone who wants to volunteer can uh, join us, can be part of the cause. Wow, wow, that's and, wonderful. And uh, so just to understand it better, when you say anyone can join you, is it just social work in terms of probably uh, monetary help that you're providing? <coughs> or what are some of the projects that do come under okay, your Okay, initially project? started off with, again, rehabilitation of anyone who's suffering from a calamity, physical, national disaster. But we ended up diverging into other areas, working with different orphanages, special mm -hmm. children's school, forming a different lines of uh, activities, projects such as anti-littering drives, uh, basically making it a movement, then making to, uh, turning it towards a sustainability option. Exactly. Providing small business provisions, uh, providing medical assistance to patients however they need it, mm -hmm. getting more people involved and, you know, working towards education. Wow, that's, well, that's like wonderful. And, you know, you, you're absolutely being modest and humble about it <laughs> as well. So you guys are doing a great job. Yeah, that's what I've Which is why we always wanted you to be here as well in the first place. But very quickly, I know that you actually have a question. What I wanted to ask was that, you know, this is when I was in my university and I actually had to write a thesis. So my teacher came up with this idea and she was like my professor, she said that, okay, you know, for anybody who's actually going to go volunteer for social service, you know, so, so they'll get these many marks even though, you know, if their thesis passes or not. I think which was a great concept and you kind of uh, have been synchronized with that concept <laughs> that, you know, this is a platform for all the youngsters who are out there. But since we are speaking about it, so can you please tell us, you know, how on, and in how many areas have you kind of helped different people? Because there are a lot of people who are writing to us every single day. Some of them are diseased, some of them need medical assistance, mm. some of them need shelter. So if now we receive such requests, can we please forward them to you? Yes, yes of course, of course. Uh, again, there are, basically there's a evaluation team. We Obviously, we can't take care of every obviously, case, but we try to maximize as, as much as we can. We go meet the family, meet the beneficiary in whatever capacity we can, be it any district of Pakistan. Just to give you an example, last year in COVID, we uh, distributed around 10,000 ration packs in 15 different districts of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So basically, we've tried to make the make it as vast uh, as possible and uh, feel free to refer uh, for anyone listening as well feel free to refer uh, any cases our uh, social media details can be shared our website yeah you can please is, tell us so yeah, again yeah. the account name for all our social media platforms is green volunteers the same goes for the website greenvolunteers.org you can contact us numbers emails everything is available over there wow. and you can get in touch you can volunteer you can refer you can donate as per your convenience wow, wow that's, that that's wonderful well, towards the end, I think we're going to repeat that as well, because I do know we do get a lot of queries about it. But now, coming back to one of our favorites, uh, for all those people who might not know what Pasicha Trust is, just a little overview. Yeah. It started back in uh, 2005, right? Right after hundreds of thousands of people were in need of help. This lady was the one, along with, of course, her companions who thought, maybe I want to be the helping hand. And ever since then, Pasicha Trust, uh, is existing. I mean, she's taken care of those people, even added more orphans to it, or even people with uh, different type of abilities who are sp with special needs as well. She's also providing them with education, with of course uh, all kinds of facilities to live, and also they live there. They yes, study there, and then they eat the best part is she's uh, training them. W what is it called? Vocation vocational, vocational, vocational training, yeah. so that they can be well independent. But uh, this is just an overview. We have already spoken about it. But Mamiram, recently you had to relocate or something of that sort. Please let us know about it. Is it still going on or is it, what is it? No, no, but you know, like uh, we don't have our own building. So okay. that, that is the biggest problem which we face, you know, after every few years, you know, when the owners refuse to <laughs> help us out. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to move. Aww. And then because of Corona, you know, we yeah. got a lot of uh, paraplegic uh, females. Okay. And we had to accommodate them. You know, we try our best to accommodate whoever, you know, approaches us. Okay. So we decided why not open up another, you know, branch for them because nobody was willing to take them. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, whenever any calamity strikes, especially uh, these underprivileged, the oppressed and the, you know, physically disabled uh, people, they really suffer. Okay. Yeah, sure. So we reached out to them and we started working on this. And then we thought that, you know, like cutting down on the expenses of the existing uh, uh, facilities which we have mm -hmm. already so why not open up another third branch okay so that was the basic concept and alhamdulillah we made a tailor-made uh, branch in pindi and Much everything you know that they, they are doing it themselves you know from cooking from you know sewing and stitching and skill development and all that educating them everything and that is being uh, you know looked after by one of our director dr nushaba and dr anjum nice. so the best thing about our uh, you know trust is that all childhood friends we are there mm. uh, we are all volunteers and we are also you know looking after into and then you know uh, Ramiz is working in child foundation another amazing foundation and recently um, we you know somebody <laughs> approached us mm -hmm. 
that you know this lady um, from uh, north her hands were chopped off by her husband so what? i approached yes uh, ramiz and i said we need you know artificial limbs chal foundation provides yeah, yeah. Art artificial limbs and within a week's time i personally took that lady can you imagine the plight of that lady you know her own family it. was not willing to keep her oh she was expecting a young baby she had a 3 year old daughter her son was sold off can you imagine such oh pathetic conditions and the society shuns such individuals so there is no other place so they approached us in fact one of our senator samina said you know ex senator Jee. she had approached me ke iram we know how good bazicha is that you can really look after that young 3 year old daughter was you know looking after her mother from taking her to the toilet and everything and giving her food so when she came to us i immediately approached ami ramiz and i alhamdulillah i mean he came as a god sent angel <laughs> within so a week's time she had artificial limbs wow and even now you know she goes to their organization so that is what i feel that you know all these uh, genuine organizations who are working right. and the government needs to you know intervene and we need to have a same platform where you know without the patronage of the government how much can we do Exactly. I mean of course I feel like just a comment to add where you saying that uh, you had actually the chance so let's say you were lucky enough that you guys were connected so you knew where to send yeah. that person mm -hmm. I feel like all the organizations working on the pattern of you both should be connected on a on exactly. a platform or probably a website even through the government like you mentioned yeah. so that people in need can actually be referred to the right places at the right time you need to have a directory for yes. sure See, for we sure. need to have a directory that anybody in any need just opens it up you know and like we need to have that here yeah. so we are educated so at times we are you know helpless we don't know where to go exactly you know i mean re only yesterday you know i received this sos call from my director nushaba that this you know a uh, beggar girl you know um, on the road she refused to beg and uh, she approached this young couple and she said that my nani is making me forcing me to beg right. but i don't want to go back and her mother had passed away the father is in the jail and nani is forcing her to beg I was in a meeting and I was constantly receiving these messages from my friend please call 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 and when I called her and this was the case and now that girl is with us oh. so you see um, of course the government facility the darul aman and all that right. so when They're you know the resources yeah limited but you need to upgrade them exactly. we have got this you know a, a, a perfect model that exactly. can be adopted anywhere and, and i keep telling so and i keep talking about it and i telling all the you know government officials everything that when good genuine organizations are there and we have got ample experience of 16 years and plus and how to manage them so why don't we upgrade the darul aman you know mm. like we need to upgrade the already existing uh, you know organization which are there to help out such needy females you know like females are uh, afraid of going to such uh, organizations yes. because they don't know whether you know anybody is yeah. going to be very welcoming yeah. or not but that's literally very true and uh, you know we we thankful once again you know on the behalf of the community and the society we live in as well that you know that there are such amazing people who are doing, doing such amazing work but you know just the question that you know that lady whose hands were chopped off by her husband is her husband behind the bars already or is he still out there for free he just he's an absconder he just and ran away he divorced her he remarried you see there are so many multiple issues and her own family shunned her this is the worst part of you know like and these females you know like and then another case remember i had mentioned in one of your program the incest case a father yeah, yeah, you know yeah, sexually yeah. abusing both her, her his daughters so when the wife complained the whole village turned against the wife how dare you how talk dare? about ill about your the husband the man of your house yeah, yeah. can imagine. you imagine Exactly. So there needs to a lot needs to be done about these females. I know, know, and you know this is why we we're together as well. But just very recently, actually, just uh, yesterday, I was in conversation uh, with one of our blind athletes, and you know mm -hmm. he was very distressed and he was very disturbed about the very fact that he couldn't participate in the Paralympics due to mm -hmm. whatever reservations, and the Paralympics were postponed. But this guy actually came up with something which I was thinking about. You know, four or five days ago, I was in conversation with one of the CEOs of uh, such an organization. of an ngo and you while i was in conversation we were talking about salaries and you know what the guidelines were so the guideline kind of states that the 70% really needs to go out in charity and 30% actually goes with whatever you know the bills were mm -hmm. so imagine the ceo was getting paid 2.7 uh, 2.7 million rupees and i was shocked to to a point that i was like that you know that this money people are actually sending in mm. so that you can help somebody i mean even to have a good life okay 5 mm. lakh rupees mm. a month you know you can actually mm. have a very good life and mm. you can live peacefully mm. and easily as well 
how do we kind of now start to talk about this as well where the ceos and people or the heads of these ngos are actually getting paid even 5 million at times as well 2.7 million and not just that you know the consultants who are actually writing all of these proposals are taking 500 and 600 pounds per day you know so, you know? so, so all of that money which can actually be used for somebody's welfare is going to waste so what can we do green volunteers please tell us <laughs> firstly yeah that makes everyone's life very difficult because the trust you which you like would you like in every trust kind of turns into a mistrust. Exactly. So continuing with whatever you guys were discussing, I think the way forward for everyone is a public-private partnership. Yeah. Uh, that is the only way um, the government and the private organization should be working hand in hand to, like uh, uh, the ma'am over here said, that we should have a uh, directory hmm. considering of all the information for our organization for anyone to reach out, read out, and right. get them the right help. True. And uh, continuing with it, I would like to touch on Chell Foundation, sure. which again, uh, Chachi here mentioned that. Uh, Chell Foundation is an organization which, is, which works for the rehabilitation of the physically disabled. Okay. Like the patient Rashta BB you mentioned came into our office. This is one such case. We have several other cases just providing new artificial limbs. Mm -hmm. so such a cause and organization is taking place in Pakistan, but we're not aware of it. So that again goes down to the same fact that we should mm. try to, obviously it's at our end as well, we should try to create as much awareness as we can and then people like you helping us out and giving us the relevant uh, a required promotion as well. Mm -hmm. wow. And that is, we hope that happens soon. We really want that for the country as well because if you're thinking about a welfare state, these are the ki kind of people we need and not the opposite. And uh, well, you know, there's actually, I don't want to say this, it's national television, but hey, there's actually in some parts of the country a stigma attached to the word NGO itself for the very same reason, Shazad. Yeah. Because and a lot of NGOs were even shut down. Yes, as well, uh, because there was a proper raid on it. Yeah, because, well, of course, the same reason people don't have the right kind of intentions. But um, maybe this is the last question for this segment. I want to actually talk about how to get that right kind of intention, because let me mention over here. I just happen to know uh, Ma'am Iram, other than a social worker as well. So it makes me think that while she has this part uh, of being so generous to the world, she has her own social life, she has her own family life. So my question being, which part actually does the right kind of balance, which makes you feel good so that you can do the other thing? You know, basically, uh, you know, I really, I, I couldn't thank Allah enough for mm -hmm. choosing me for this thing. You know, it, it is nothing, it's not my doing and I've, I'm grateful to Allah for blessing me with such amazing parents. I yeah. got this childhood and this was part of my upbringing. Okay. And I feel that in my professional life, I'm um, a remedial therapist working with dyslexic children. Yeah. Mm. So both my, you know, these uh, passions, you know, serving humanity and especially the, the females and whoever comes to our way, uh, our way, you know, even we are providing medical help. You know, my husband works in a um, right. uh, hospital after re retirement from the Navy. So uh, free uh, medical help over there, whatever we can manage. Now, mm. thanks to the government, SR's card is there, the health yeah. card is there. Yeah. So that is really helpful sure. uh, for us. So Alhamdulillah, both my professions are such that mm. I'm reaching out to the masses and whatever I can do in my humble capacity. Then again, what Ramit said that public-private uh, you partnership. know, mm. partnership is very imp imp important. In our humble capacity, how much can I do? Yeah. I would love to open up branches of not only Bazicha Trust, because the model is there. Yeah. The already existing uh, Darul Daru Laman and th things like yeah. shelter homes, let's upgrade them. Just there make them are, sustainable. Yes, and there are citizens, you know, everybody has this goodness of heart, but they don't know where to go. That is why when you say that the NGOs, you know, the CEOs are getting so much, this was one of the reason we, one of the main reason for opening up, you know, this shelter home that all of us are, you know, the, I'm the chairperson, I'm the founder, I'm try to be the biggest donor. Mm. I try my best. Exactly. That, yes. and, and you know, I'm actually going to talk about it as well, that ladies and gentlemen, that for all of those people who actually come over here, you know, they're volunteers, you know, they, they do not represent an NGO, they do not represent an, an organization which is actually looking for funding. It totally depends on you whether you want to help them or not. And they invite you to come over to their place, look around, and then they will do whatever you can in your capacity as well. And these are the people who we really need to promote out there as well, because they're really doing it with true essence. But you know, just very quickly on a very lighter note, uh, Mr. Sirim, I'm sorry that I'm <laughs> going to say that. But since he's your husband, you know, obviously a lot of free medical camps might be attended by him and you know, you take a lot of children to him as well. Does he at times say, you know, I know that I'm your husband, but I'm very happy with my husband. Something like that. You know, uh, husbands are never happy with their own wives. <laughs> <laughs> just with their <laughs> own wives. You know, with she their own wives. <laughs> 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 so, 
कहते ना उर्दू में मैंने इससे औरों क्या औरों के अपने, अपने बच्चे एंड औरों के I'm sure you agree with me. If I'm just watching, me. Uncle, I'm sorry, but you know, I had to ask her. But imagine your, that you know, a question about you made her so happy. So Aww. obviously, you know, she's going to make peace with it. No, the credit goes to him uh, as well for uh, you know tolerating a headstrong wife and who's into so. Much. Not every man can do that for sure. I not agree every with man you. can do that. Not every man. Of course, there are challenges. You know, like it, it's not a smooth sailing. Obviously. But then again, whenever in this, when you um, enter this path, there are challenges. You know, yeah. like Allah has given us. You know, look at uh, the. Quran is full of such, such stories. Exactly. So it's not smooth sailing. Of you course. know, you have to give up a lot to yeah. achieve this much. All right. But the sense of satisfaction, like yeah. earlier you were saying, what do you gain? Yeah. The exactly. sense of satisfaction. Alhamdulillah, I'm 56 years old. Mashallah. I don't have any major ailment. And you don't look it at all. Oh, because of my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, you entirely you. <laughs> No, you know, like Alhamdulillah, the sense of satisfaction. I don't. Have, people are talking, need I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. I need yeah. to take this. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. sleeping pills, yeah. something like you know, that. For all of those chakras they've given to people, they're coming back now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they, yeah, they, maybe they cannot sleep. Yeah. As well. So the sense of satisfaction, Alhamdulillah, and when your conscience is clear, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, and I can, can't thank Allah enough. Mashallah. Oh, and so since sweet. you know, uh, you actually mentioned that you know it's not a smooth sail. So obviously, ladies and gentlemen, families that support system. Where you can, you know, if you refer to referring to it as smooth sailing or not smooth sailing, I mean, there will be your life jacket out there as well. So obviously, it's the family which are the support system. But thank you very much, Mr. Siram. Thank you very much, Mr. Ramiz, for joining us. Wonderful to be in conversation and wherever we can actually help you yes, and be there out there. To. You know, we would love to do so as well. And whenever there's anything which we can help you with, PT World is that platform. Jim Sab is our producer. You know mm -hmm. them as well. You know, please make sure to join us. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're actually going to head out towards a short break. You know, we'll uh, say goodbye to these lovely angels who are over here in the studios with us. They, I mean, there's no age cap to uh, angels or being angels as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, it might be your day today as well. Uh, to please be an make angel? Sure, yeah, Aww. if you want to help somebody, you can always do that. But other than that, it's, it's the monsoon season. We really want to talk about that. How much rain are we expecting in the few days to come? So, let's kind of try, talk about that. We're heading towards a... Very short break. Stay tuned. Good morning. Good morning.
Welcome back to Well This Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Jumma Mubarak, I hope you all are having an amazing morning already. And uh, well, in the first segment, we actually drew a lot of inspiration from a lot of amazing people, two of them actually. And you know, I feel like Shazad, if you do listen to such stories that bring you inspiration, and of course they do eventually motivate you to go out there and do some good to the world. Yeah. And that is how the cycle of good keeps going on. I mean, one person gets inspired, they give to other, and well, it goes on, it's a cycle. Exactly. But right now we need to talk about something important that we are going through no well of course it's we are going through the pandemic but it's not the pandemic yeah. there's something else that we go through every year uh, not only as a country but the entire world it is sort of a small season it's called monsoon a lot yeah. of people love it I love rain I'm obsessed with rain but it, it's not all fun and games it comes yeah. actually with a lot of negative impacts on the environment uh, how so we're we gonna learn that exactly and before we kind of uh, set on a journey where we're going to learn about it just a few day, uh, days ago you know it was raining very heavily early in the morning yeah. and you know my mother kind of woke me up and she was like hey you know what you know the water's coming inside the house and I was like you know what am I supposed to do <laughs> so actually I had to kind of go out there you know find out where the water was kind of blocked and you know take everything out it was but it was raining so heavily that you know it was something which I couldn't comprehend and I was like okay you know what so if it's coming inside probably all we can do is put four or five towers in front of the doors right. and and wait for the rain to stop as well number two the one thing which I actually hate about rain over here in Pakistan is, I mean, even if it's not raining, it's about to rain, mm -hmm. the electricity is going to go out. And, and, you know, that's such a major problem. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with our electric lines or, you know, what's, what's wrong with our apparatus or the system. You know, as soon as, you know, it's just, you know, for example, you know, there's a thunderstorm, you know, all of a sudden the electricity is gone. I mean, so I, I want the authority to kind of look into it as well. These days, you know, there's a lot of load sharing over here in Islamabad as well. You know, why is it happening? Please, if there's anybody who can actually kind of help us about, uh, help us with that as well, we would definitely want you to do that. Hmm. But, you know, particularly talking about monsoon, I believe, you know, there have been uh, actually floods in some way, some parts of the Europe as well. We want to talk about that. There's climate change and then it's going to be Eid. A lot of people are actually thinking about if it's going to rain, whether we should get the animals or not. So we'll be in conversation with an expert who actually at times even get asked whether what clothes to wear if you know it's <laughs> raining or if it's, you know, it's a thunderstorm out there as well. But we actually have a comprehensive report to share. Please go ahead, take a look and once you guys will come back, we will introduce our amazing guest. Monsoon is actually a seasonal shift in the wind direction and pressure distribution that causes a change in precipitation. Monsoons typically occur in tropical areas in various atmospheric conditions influence the monsoon winds. When the summer monsoon season begins, South Asia can experience extreme rainfall that can lead to flooding in countries such as Bangladesh, Bhutan, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka and India. Earlier, Pakistan Meteorological Department said Karachi is expected to receive more rainfall than usual during this monsoon season. It is to be mentioned here that BMD has cautioned against likely flash flooding in the hill torrents of Punjab, AJK and KPK, while urban flooding in the plain areas of Punjab Sin and KPK in its seasonal outlook. Above normal temperatures and high altitudes are likely to increase the rate of snowmelt in the northern areas, which subsequently increasing the chances of base flow in the upper Indus Basin. Moreover, monsoon rainfall is expected to remain near normal during July to September 2021 in Pakistan. The eastern and upper half of Punjab, eastern Balochistan and Kashmir are likely to receive moderately above normal rainfall, while in Sin, slightly above normal rainfall is expected during the season. A monsoon is actually a seasonal shift in the wind direction and pressure distribution. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that was a comprehensive report we wanted to share with each and every one of you. We're very lucky that we've actually been joined by an environmentalist over here in the studios with us. He is Ismail Shabir. Hello, assalamu alaikum, good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you? I'm good as far as I'm safe uh, in rain. Wow, that's <laughs> safe in rain. <laughs> well, that's brilliant. No, why would you say that as far as I'm safe in rain? Do you think that, you know, in days to come, there will be a lot of floods away in Pakistan? Uh, I think it's very much predictable by even a common man these days because okay. uh, almost every year we uh, get floods because yeah. we don't really manage too much water exactly. when, whenever there is. So when I, I was saying that as far as I am safe uh, because of two reasons. First is because uh, there could be a lot of rain in coming days as well yeah. because this is the monsoon season. Yeah. And second is if my light won't go, <laughs> you know, I oh. had this power issue 
uh, it was yesterday <laughs> in a yeah. right in F6. It's almost every, <laughs> so every for, day. For a whole day, it yeah. was going like from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So, yeah, the, these are yeah, the and, things. And, you know, you actually get very disturbed as well. You like, you know, I mean, we talk about development, we talk about being, you know, shoulder to shoulder with all of those developing economies as well. Imagine we cannot even set our electricity right here. I mean, we need to do that. And there are, well, Pakistan actually... <laughs> I don't have the time to say this. Pakistan actually has the capacity of producing a lot of electricity yeah, more than it needs, but because a lot of line losses and because of people not being responsible enough to pay bills, what not, it goes to waste. We don't have enough because of people. I know. Now, coming back to you, uh, let us know in the coming days and especially on Eid, what are we expecting in terms of the weather, how to be safe in it? And well, we are prone to floods and national, natural calamities. What, let's say, God forbid, are we expecting this year? Should I guess, we be prepared for something is what I'm saying. So, so as, as far as this uh, uh, rain prediction or flood prediction is concerned, maybe MET department and NDMA would yeah. be better, be to, be better answer. to answer. But uh, I saw their last advice which, which was on 12th July uh, okay. for the upcoming flood in different areas of Pakistan. Oh. So yeah, uh, whenever there is uh, monsoon and our uh, reservoir capacity is of course uh, uh, low, Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it has, it is very short capacity uh, with this rain uh, okay. now and of course floods are predictable uh, yeah. due to this. And, and you know since we were talking about it as well and you actually mentioned that 12th is that date that from there onwards you know people should actually be expecting God forbid floods as well. We do not want that. But which areas do you think will be hardly struck by the floods as well? So let's talk about those areas so that people out there if they're listening they can kind of go back to those people and let them know. Hey, you know what? You know, uh, uh, it, it really depends the uh, nature of the flood and the kind of flood. Uh, okay. The area is dependent on that. So, um, Southern Punjab, uh, Muzaffargarh and uh, adjacent areas, you know, those population living along the riverside are mostly affected okay. due to flood. And uh, in summers, there is uh, also another kind of flood, which is Glof, Glacial Lake, Alpers Flood, yeah, which yeah. is in mm, northern, northern areas. areas. That is another kind of flood. And now, this uh, there is this third kind of flood, which is induced due to uh, these uh, rain splashes uh, during okay. monsoon. Really? It is rain-induced flood. So uh, that is also there, and that that has happened in you know uh, Germany and Belgium as well. Mm. Um, and you know, in their 60, 70 years old is saying that they have never seen any such thing yeah. in their it's life. It's unusual for their kind yes. of, uh, well, environment and the land that they live in as well. So what do you think might be the reason? This is, of course, climate change and climate emergency because, uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, me or you or anyone shouldn't be happy about this. Of but course. I think this is, this is a wake-up call for them as well. Yeah. Being a developing country, we were uh, always at the worst state and we are at the worst state due to climate change, mm -hmm. whether it's floods, it heat waves, or any, any you know, climate-induced disaster. But uh, now the devel uh, developed world is also facing, like look at the US, you look at the Canada, they are facing with heat waves and due to heat waves, forest fires uh, are you know, uh, uh, happening oh, in America. Common, yeah. And uh, in Belgium and Germany now, they have devastating floods in which a lot are missing many are dead so uh, they were they were not prepared because they were not expecting it so yeah. this right. this is due to climate change uh, and it's irreversible now right irreversible of course it's already late to take uh, actions and myers and i think uh, now is the time to act on that to reduce global emissions uh, and exactly and, and you know building up on that this is something which i wanted to actually ask and i wanted to kind of clear my mind you know obviously a lot of people out there will clear theirs as well but you know, before uh, I asked you this question, you actually said that due to splash rains, obviously a lot of floods take place. You know, I think it took place in uh, Pindi as well. You know, the Nala actually got full just yes. because it was raining for continuously three, four days. And, you know, the, I don't know whether we call it Balsafai way in Pakistan, that we really need to do it so that, you know, that the water keeps on flowing. So I hope that the authorities are taking some stringent action because obviously after that, that incident never happened, alhamdulillah. Okay, so that, 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 that kind of flood is urban flooding and okay. that is due to mismanagement. Okay. Because whenever there is, uh, um, it's, it's not really an, a nice thing to say, but whenever there is a, a place is cloudy like Rawal Pindi, Ilaho, And people Karachi. are living on the left and the right side of the Nullahs yes. as well. And that is not because of population, I would say. It is because of the mismanagement and misgovernance. Okay. And, uh, um, uh, not proper planning. Uh, In terms of planning commission was responsible to okay. really uh, plan all these uh, yeah. things and look at these things. And uh, you were mentioning nalas. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, th that those nalas were made in Karachi, in Lahore, Rawalpindi, in any area were made to you know uh, 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 a passage for the, uh, for the rain. Exactly. Whenever the uh, rain uh, that that but it's extra water so can full go. With garbage, but you due know. to garbage and solid waste that channels has blocked, and due to of course construction uh, right above the uh, nalas. 
uh, that that passage has blocked and due to that water has to come on the road okay. exactly but very quickly you know coming down to what i intended to ask was that you know obviously alhamdulillah we've gone through a billion tree initiative as well and you know just very recently i was uh, seeing this report on television where the trees were planted because a lot of people were asking so what change is it going to bring because you know planting a lot of trees actually means that you know it's going to stop flooding as well you know the, the, that's something which a layman like me understands yeah. as well so from 1 billion to 10 billion that's where we, we are aiming you know how much is it going to impact us in the first place you know planting all of these trees and when are we going to see the change of you know the this plantation drive because as of now i don't think that you know it's actually having an impact or is it I think it's very important to understand that whenever we talk about plantation, we talk about the right species yeah. and we should talk about local species. Like in Islamabad, you have some Poland, local species yeah. to plant in other parts of there. You know, climatic conditions can be suitable for any species to plant, but mm -hmm. we should go local about that, number one. It can bring a lot of change. Okay. And number second is that, you know, we are talking about climate changes. So to change our climate, it will take 10 years, 20 years. Right. We, we talk, uh, talk in terms of decades, not right. in terms of five years or six years or three or years. Months. <laughs> so it will, of course, so it will take uh, a decade or two to see the impact of 10 billion trees. But that is, of course, uh, of course, a very encouraging step by this government. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for joining us and thank you very much for kind of letting us know, you know, what the impacts will be. And for everybody out there, please make sure that you're prepared. Keep an umbrella uh, in your car. This is one thing which I would recommend. And I think that it should be a necessity mm -hmm. to keep an umbrella in your car as well yeah. because it's going to be raining and you really do not want your nice suit to actually get wet as well. And that too, especially before a live show. All right, and please make sure that you do not keep your animals in train or near any electric poles for that matter. Well, uh, make sure to write to us uh, and give us your feedback on our social media pages with the name of Well This Morning. We'll see you on Monday, inshallah, next. Take care. Good morning. Good morning. Tell us what happened. Well, it. Uh, I would like to go in past. Yeah. It was about 2000.